Great concern, even alarm in Brussels over what that election victory could mean for the European Union. CCTV's Jack Barton joins me from Brussels. So, Jack, what's been the reaction there? Well, that's right. As Filio just mentioned, this is the first time an anti-austerity party has been voted to power in Europe. So, unsurprisingly, there is great alarm here in Brussels about the party that wants to, as you mentioned before, introduce those feel-good policies, policies that involve lots of public spending. Uh, but, they, of course, they also want to renegotiate the bailout deal or write off a lot of public debt or simply tear those deals up. But what we've heard over and over again from officials today, essentially the same message. They, they welcome the election of the party. They welcome the new leader, Alexis Tsipras. Uh, they respect Greece's sovereignty, respect the country's democratic process. Then comes the inevitable but and the warning that Greece will have to stick to the agreements that previous governments uh, arranged, that they will talk to the government, but they will not renegotiate on some of those tougher demands the new Greek government is putting forward. Greeks celebrate the start of what their soon-to-be new leader, Alexis Tsipras, calls an end to the national shame of austerity. At the same time, finance ministers assembled in Brussels to assess whether compromise is possible. Greece's new government wants to negotiate the country's bailout and default on up to half of more than $300 billion worth of public debt. We've already done a lot to lift the debt burden for Greece uh, over the last couple of years in terms of interest and maturity, uh, the length of the loan, loans. Um, we've always said that we continue to work with them uh, if the Greeks commit to uh, what we've agreed with. But Greece's new government has made it clear it does not want to commit to what's been agreed to. The Syriza party and its young leader, Alexis Tsipras, represent a leap into the unknown for the Eurozone. And the rise of what is Europe's first anti-austerity party has set alarm bells ringing here in Brussels. It's uh, the first Greek party that does not own anything to the past, to the oligarchs who have a fresh start. Many people construe this as a reaction towards the euro, towards the bailouts and uh, the prison of debt. But this is actually just as much the revolution of the youth towards the establishment. No one doubts Greece will now start rolling back austerity. But that does not mean Brussels is expecting a Greek exit from the Eurozone anytime soon. The best way to look at it is that they will probably, um, the first time the Greeks have mounted to some kind of leverage that could come to a compromise with the Troika. The Troika comprises the International Monetary Fund, the European Central Bank and the European Commission, where on Monday officials played down speculation of a Grexit. The Commission fully respects the sovereign and democratic choice of the Greek people. We are ready to engage with a new government once it is formed. Greece has about 7 billion euros worth of outstanding debt to pay in the months ahead and will need funds from the so-called Troika to cover it. That will require compromise on all sides. Compromise that neither Athens nor the European Commission has yet indicated they are willing to make. Well, Syriza made a lot of election promises in the lead-up to the election, but what it has not put forward as of yet is a list of formal demands. And that's really what officials here in Brussels want to hear, that formal list of demands. It's expected that the new government will come up with that list of demands ahead of a major leaders' summit here in Brussels on February the 12th, a summit that will be attended by all 28 EU leaders, and that will, of course, include Greece's new Prime Minister, Alexis Tsipras. Jack, you mentioned in your piece that the Eurozone finance ministers also met today. And was their message any different? And is there a sign of compromise when they say Greece must abide by rules and the commitments that it has made? Well, the Eurogroup president, Jerome Dieselbloom, did say going into the meeting they were going to discuss where they could find compromise in the bailout loans. So clearly they do want to make some co compromise. They are prepared to negotiate with Greece to some degree. And from what we understand, they're looking at extending the length of the loans. That's already happened before. They indicated it could happen again and bringing down the interest rates, sort of rolling over those loans almost indefinitely. 
and in the hope that inflation picks up and gradually they become such a, a small part of GDP that they gradually go away over the period of decades. Uh, we also heard from people like Michael Noonan, Ireland's foreign minister, who said there is a lot of sympathy amongst the ministers. They understand the hardship, the 25% uh, unemployment, 50% amongst the youth, and the fact that unemployment benefits uh, expire after one year. So they, he said he and many other ministers were in the mood to give some leniency, particularly to the, uh, the anti-austerity moves, a bit more public spending, a bit more job creation. Where they said they wouldn't budge, though, was on those big issues of just eradicating the, uh, the bailout program, or particularly when it came to public debt, you know, eradicating $150 billion worth of public debt. They just said that's a non-starter. So on small issues, they are prepared to negotiate. But of course, the new Greek government have made it clear they're not looking to negotiate on small issues. They're looking to make really big changes. All right, CCTV's Jack Barton, live in Brussels. Thank you.